This is Yana Smakula for simonsestia.com and thanks for joining me today. Welcome to another episode from my bi-monthly Yeepy for Yana video series. In today's episode, I'm creating a fun, stamped, colored, and die-cut background for a card using Breakfast Buddies stamp set. So here's a quick look at the stamp set. It features a bunch of fun images of food that one would usually have for breakfast. Plus, there are fun sentiments that go along with each type of food. Now, I love to have eggs for breakfast and, of course, bacon. So I decided to go with the eggs images for my card. There are three different egg images, and I'm going to use all three of those. If you've been following me for some time, you know that I'm all about creating my own unique backgrounds with the help of small images. So this is what I'm going to do in this video today. Now, finding inspiration for my projects is sometimes a tricky business. I like to keep a special board on Pinterest where I pin images that I find inspiring as I browse Pinterest or any other website. It's a public board, so it's not a secret board, and anyone can go and look at all of the images that I have there, and you can also repin the images from there to your own boards if you like. As I was browsing this board for inspiration, I came across this fun egg pattern and decided to use this as inspiration for this card today. So I mounted all three egg images onto my clear block just to save time as I didn't really need to stamp them individually. It didn't really matter in which order I stamped these. And I stamped a bunch of eggs at once in Simon's intense black ink onto white cardstock. And this is Nina Solar White. Now, I knew I would be coloring these images with my alcohol markers, so I made sure to pick the right kind of ink for my stamping, and this particular ink is designed to work perfectly with Copic markers or any other alcohol ink markers. You can choose to color your images using other coloring mediums. Simply make sure your ink, for, that you're, the ink they're using for stamping, is best suited for that kind of coloring. I stamped a bunch of eggs onto this white cardstock panel, and I was hoping that I would have enough images to cover the front of an A2 card base, but I later uh, had to stamp a few more images as I was running short. For my coloring, I picked Copic markers, and the reason I went with Copics and not something else is because of the ease of use of Copic markers. I can quickly color a bunch of images, do some quick, you know, an easy shading, and be done in like 5 to 10 minutes. If I were to color one or two images, I could have picked colored pencils and watercolors and really took my time to do some awesome and detailed, co detailed coloring. But since I was doing a lot of coloring, I didn't want to focus much on the coloring alone. And besides, the coloring is not the, you know, the star of the show in this project. It's the pattern itself that makes this project unique. So I used just three markers to color the egg yolk, Y19, Y15, and Y11, and only one marker, C1, to add just a little bit of shading to the egg whites. I don't think that that was necessary, but I just felt like I wanted to add a little bit of gray there. Once my coloring was done, I used coordinating dyes and cut these images out. There is a die for every image in the stamp set, so if you have these coordinating dies, it makes cutting these images a super easy task. Now, I used my Spellbinders Platinum die cutting and embossing machine to cut all of these out. Now, my machine sits off to the side, and I don't always like to move it to have it in my camera frame because it is a big machine. I have the original Platinum with eight and a half inch opening. And in order to have it in my video frame, I need to zoom out. And then that means that you guys will see how messy my desk is. Not that I am pretending that it's clean and it is messy. It really is very messy and I never hide that. But anyhow, when die cutting is not an important part of the video or the technique that I'm showing, I don't actually or I don't necessarily show the die cutting part on video. Next, once my die cutting was done, I cut a piece of black cardstock, and this is black paper from Simon Says Stamp. I cut it to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I started to arrange my die cut elements on this paper. Let's rewind a little bit and talk about the different kinds of patterns or backgrounds that I like to make. So there's one kind of background where I do a lot of stamping, and I stamp everything directly on a cart front or on a panel that goes on the front of my cart. 
There's no die cutting involved with that kind of background. There's also a kind of a background, and I like to call that dimensional pattern stamping. That's the kind of background where I stamp my images, but I also cut them out with coordinating dies. And then I foam mount them to create a pattern or a background for my card. In this case, I also like to use foam adhesive to pop things up. I like to do that when I form clusters of images. For example, I can have florals and leaves and I don't want to do masking. So I would just cut the images out and foam mount them on a card, cl creating clusters. But also those clusters will then form a pattern. Or like I'm showing in this case, I want to have a dark background, but I don't want to spend the time coloring that background. It would have been too hard to stamp the eggs onto a white cardstock piece, color the eggs, and also color the background black. It's much easier if you have coordinating dies to stamp and color the eggs, cut them out, and then just foam mount them onto a black background. I arranged my images on the black panel and I realized that I didn't have enough eggs to cover the entire panel. I used my Crystal Katana pickup tool to pick up the pieces from the desk and help me position them on the paper. Now it is an expensive tool, but it is very helpful tool to have. I use it all the time to pick up and position little sequins and droplets. And it is also a fantastic tool to have for picking up little die cuts like these little eggs here. And for doing inlay die cutting as well, where you have a bunch of pieces that you need to inlay into your background. So here I've also cut another panel. This is a smaller panel. It's cut to four by five and a quarter inches. And I cut a smaller panel hoping that I would have enough pieces to cover it all. But in the end, I still didn't have enough simply because I clustered the pieces um, closer together. So I ended up stamping and cutting a few more eggs for this card. I love to pop things up on my projects. I love to have that dimension on my cards. This is why I actually have trouble creating one layer designs I always end up using foam adhesive for something and it's no longer a one layer card. Anyhow, here I'm using foam squares from Scrapbook Adhesives and I'm foam mounting each die cut one by one, filling this background in. Because I want this background to look as if it was cut from a larger sheet, I'm also trimming some of the die cuts and letting them go outside the edge, or rather I'm making it look like as if they go outside the edge. And with foam adhesive, I have found it easier to actually cut the die cut first, cut your piece with scissors first, and then foam mount, rather than foam mount and then try to trim it. It's just easier for me. To make this background appear random, I'm using the usual tricks that I use when I'm creating backgrounds like this. I'm rotating images as I adhere them onto the card. These images, the eggs, have little smiley faces to them. So I make sure that some face to the left, some face to the right, some face up and some face down. I'm also mixing my images. I have three different shaped eggs here. So I'm making sure I don't have them all grouped. I don't have all shape um, eggs in one area, but I spread them out on the background. And lastly, I'm not adhering things going on a straight line. This is not the kind of background where I want things to have a very clean and linear look. To create a sentiment for my card, I stamped we go together like bacon and eggs in black ink onto a strip of white paper. And I also stamped some bacon onto another piece of white paper. Now I did struggle with coloring my bacon. At first I added too much red, but later just added color following the lines on the image. And that kind of helped me to color this image better. It looked more like the bacon you'd see in real life. I cut the bacon image out using coordinating die and foam mounted my sentiment bacon and another egg die cut image onto my background. Originally, I wasn't planning on adding the bacon, but the sentiment I picked mentions the bacon, so it would have been odd not to have the bacon image on my project. Once my background was finished, I used fun foam and foam mounted this panel onto a white A2 card base. Lastly, I used glossy accents and I coated each egg yolk with a generous layer of glossy to create that realistic looking glossy dome to the eggs. So this finishes this card and video. I hope you will give this idea a try. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. 
I'll see you next time. Bye.